Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the beautiful country of Thailand with its stunning jungles and mountains. The area is dotted with Buddhist monasteries which rely on local support for activities and resources. At the Wat Luang Phor Lamai Temple in Phetchabun Province, the monks maintain a small menagerie to draw the public to the temple. They keep just over two dozen wild boars there along with an Asiatic black bear and rely on the locals to bring food to the animals. The bear at the monastery is enclosed in a recessed concrete pit pen that is gray and has no trees or anything similar to its natural environment. It is alone and interacts with people over the retaining wall for food. Lately the monastery was a little short on resources for food for the animals. A public invitation to visitors to bring food was sent out and many people responded by bringing vegetables, fruit and rice to the animals. On August 2nd, 2017, at about 11 a.m., 36-year-old Naifum Pramrati was visiting with four of his friends. They had brought a small stash of food into the animal facility and were having a fun time tossing food to the bear and watching it hungrily devour it. That is when things were a little off the rails for Naifum. He decided to tie a bowl of rice onto a rope and lower it into the enclosure for the bear. He leaned over the retaining wall and dangled the bowl just beyond the bear's reach. It responded by looking up and trying to reach the bowl with its mouth, but Nifum would pull the bowl away a short distance. A little info about the bear is in order. The monks at the monastery had raised him from a cub and it was completely dependent on people for every resource it needed. It hadn't had enough food lately, despite being very fat. It had been apparently orphaned as a cub, and people who found it had brought it to the monastery to be taken care of. Even as it was raised by people, its natural instincts guided it to search for food and a mate. In the wild, this bear would have roamed potentially hundreds of miles each week while it searched for food. It would have spent energy extracting these food resources from stumps and soil, while finding fruit and honey for further nourishment. Now, however, its enclosure was only a few thousand square feet, and humans handed it food over the concrete wall each day. As Nifum and his friends were dropping the food into the enclosure, the bear was on all fours while eating the morsels landing around it. Nifum leaned over the wall and dangled the bowl of rice above the bear, and the reaction of the bear was to stand to its full height and grab onto Nifum. It pulled him from atop the wall and into its enclosure. The bear had clearly pulled the man who was teasing him into the enclosure. The ensuing attack could have been motivated by several factors, which we will discuss in a moment. As soon as Naifum landed within the enclosure, the massive bear was upon him and pinned him in the corner just beneath his friends. It quickly scratched and bit him all over his body. It initially focused its attack on his legs and inner thigh regions as he curled into a ball. Having only limited access to anything vital, the bear turned and focused its attention onto Naifum's shoulder and back area. As the bear tore at his flesh, Naifum's friends threw rocks and other items at the bear while they yelled in an attempt to frighten it away. They found a long pole and began poking and prodding the bear, trying to get it to abandon the attack on the man. They even dumped a little cold water on it, but it was all in vain. The bear reacted to the noise and strikes by dragging Nifum all the way across the enclosure and eventually into its cage area, where it was locked when the enclosure needed cleaning. It sank its teeth into the tissue of his left shoulder as it dragged him, and as soon as it was within the cage, it began tearing at the wound it had already opened up in his shoulder. Nifum's friend ran around the enclosure to the side where they could see the cage. They watched at close range as their friend, now exhausted and in shock, was being chewed on by the bear. Then one of the zookeepers ran up to the scene and entered the cage. He used a piece of wood to batter the bear and try to drive it off. It took a few strikes from the wood to convince the bear to retreat into its den area, which was locked behind it. Now that the bear had been separated from Nifum, the rescuers focused on dragging him from the enclosure to a waiting truck. He was rushed to the local hospital for emergency medical treatment, which saved his life. While at the hospital, his injuries were discovered. He had hundreds of scratches from the bear's claws all over his body. They were, in all seriousness, from head to toe. He had numerous rips and tears in his flesh, but the most serious one was located on the back of his left shoulder. As the attack video indicates, the bear spent a lot of time pulling muscle and skin from this area and eating it. YouTube prohibits the posting of graphic content like this, 
So if you would like to see it, you can access it from my Patreon link below. I do warn you, it is very graphic and disturbing, so view at your own discretion. As Nifum recovered in the hospital, he quickly recovered his ability to speak. The amount of flesh chewed from his shoulder will never be able to be recovered, nor reconstructed by surgeons. He will simply have a large hole in his flesh there, even after the skin grows over the wound. He lived, but barely. After compiling the facts surrounding this episode, I am left with a few questions. Do you think the bear intended to pull him into the enclosure to kill him? Once Nifum was in the pen, was the rest of the attack territorial? Do you think the bear's life of captivity in a drab pen increased its violent potential? Would you be so daring as to lean over a retaining wall to tease a hungry bear with food? I will enjoy reading and answering your posts, so please post them below, and let's talk about it.